God that can do miracles. A God that can change finances. A God that can change marriages. A God that can change a business. A God that's alive. And thank you that we can worship you, Father, in this place. We love you, Jesus. Forever and ever and ever, Father, we will love you. Change us. If there's things that need to be changed, change us, Father. If there's things that we need to let let go of, Father, let go of it. And if there's things that we have to learn, discipline, Father, that we can do it. Because you're alive. We want to make you famous, Father, wherever we are, wherever we go. Make us bold, Father. Open up our ears for tonight. Open up our hearts, Father, so that we may see your work, so that we may see your kingdom, Father. So that we may learn from you. We love you, Jesus. We honor you. Be the teacher tonight. You be the teacher and you teach us your work tonight. I pray that every word out of my mouth will be in obedience with you. Be in obedience with your word. So that people don't see me. But so that they see you Father. We love you. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We are going, well, we continue the series called, Where Do I Go? Where do I go? Where do I go? And today, it's all about heaven. Today is all about heaven. Next week will all will be all about the horrors of hell. But tonight it's all about the glory of heaven. And you have the choice. It's you. You've got the choice. Do you want to go to heaven, the glory of heaven? Or do you want to go to the glory of or the horrors of hell? It's your choice. So today it's all about heaven. And people ask me, people ask me, Alicia asked me. Alicia asked me, don't let let people say. Alicia asked me. Who's this? Why is this series all about? Why is it all about death? I don't want to hear about death. I want to live today. I want to live now. I want to hear about life. I want about. I want to hear about. I don't want to think about death. And I said to them, there was a key word, a key thought in our message throughout yesterday, or last week, and throughout today. What you believe about eternity determines how you live today. What you believe about eternity determines how you live today. So just a recap of last week. Last week, we said, what happens the the first minute when you die? What happens? We said, okay, our physical bodies die. And we said that we don't hope it's through a shark attack, but through something else. Okay? So your physical body dies. After your physical body dies, your soul separates or leaves your physical body and it will go through the judgment. There's two judgments. We said there's two judgments. Number one, the white throne judgment. Okay? That's where all the non-believers will go. If you're a non-believer, you will go to that judgment and God will judge you there. If you're a believer, you will go to the, the throne seat, the bema seat. That's the place where you will be rewarded for what you did on earth. Okay? So tonight... Whatever you believe about forever impacts how you will live in the now. So tonight, today is all about heaven. And I just want to say this before I start. I really tried my best, best, best. But I can, I promise you I will never succeed in this sermon or in this message today. Never. I will try my best, but I will never succeed at this message. Why? Because I cannot, I cannot do heaven any justice. Okay, I cannot do heaven any justice. I can try my really best just to explain to you how heaven will be like, but I can do no justice for this. It's impossible for me to even describe the glory of heaven. But I want to try my best, and I really want to try to let the Word of God speak to you tonight. 
And not me, but let the word of God explain to you what heaven will be like. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9, I first say, Paul says, But as it's written, what no eye has seen and no ear has heard, and what has never come into a man's heart, is what God has prepared for those who love him. No eye has seen, no ear has heard. No, it never came into a man's heart what God has prepared for those who love him. So I believe that God's word will explain to you tonight a glimpse of heaven that you can, that you can decide. Do you want to go to the glory of heaven or do you want to go to the other side? I want to read you two big passages. So we're going to read big passages and then um, after, the, after the scriptures we can start. Let's start with John 14, a big scripture. Your heart must not be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If not, I would have told you today. I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And if I go away and I prepare a place for you, I will come back and I will receive you to myself. So that wherever I am, you may be also. You know the way where I am going. Lord, Thomas said, obviously Thomas said, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then I want to read you a scripture. John was exiled to the island of Patmos. And he had a vision given to him by the Spirit of God about heaven. Let's read it. Revelation 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth has passed away and the sea existed no longer. I also saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of the heaven from God, prepared like a bride adorned for her husband. Then I heard a loud voice from the throne. Look, God's dwelling is with men and he will live with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will exist no longer. Grief will ex no longer exist. Crying and pain will exist no longer. Because the previous things have passed away. Then the one seated on the throne said, Look, I am making everything new. He also said, Right, because these words are faithful and true. Verse 7. Just go to verse 7. Just skip a few. To Revelation 21 verse 7. The victor... The victor will inherit these things and I will be his God and he will be my son. Okay, so in order for us to understand what heaven is like, I really want to start by telling, by showing you what heaven is not. Okay, so by understanding what heaven will be like, tonight I'm going to share with you things what heaven is not. Because I believe many people have misconceptions about heaven. People believe that the moment you die and you go to heaven, that you're going to be a just little big, fat, bald, naked angel playing with a harp on a cloud for a thousand years. I don't you know. Did you saw that pictures of? Okay, whatever. So I believe many people believe that they're going to be fat, bald, naked. There's already people fat, already people naked, already people bald. But praise the Lord. Okay, you're an angel, and we will be floating on the clouds, singing songs for ten thousand years. And that's way. That's a misconception of heaven. So there's three misconceptions of heaven I really want to explain to you tonight. Number one misconception of heaven is that heaven will be boring. Okay, misconception. That's a lie. Because you know the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Lucifer was one out of three archangels created by God. Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer. That was the three, that was the three archangels created by God. Then Lucifer, he was the worship angel. He was the worship angel. So he was the one singing songs, doing the worship. And he was the, the Bible says he was the glorious creature in heaven. But you see, the problem for Lucifer is that he wanted to be like God. The problem for Lucifer is that he wanted all the glory that God had. And God said that I do not share any glory with anyone. I want to take all the glory. So then God cast him out, cast him out of heaven and then took one third of all the angels with him. 
people, scholars, believers believe that that's the demonic forces. So Lucifer and one third of the angels, boom, cast it down. And now Satan is the prince of darkness today. He's the prince of darkness. He try, he lies to us today. Every day he lies to us. He tries to deceive you. He come to kill, to steal, and to destroy us. So don't you think that, don't you think that the prince of darkness, Satan, will try to convince the world of two things? He will try to, well, convince the world of things. And I believe the world is still believing that. Sin. Believing that hell is not a real place. Hell is not a real place. That hell is just a fuck, fiction, a fiction in a little story. And then the second one is that heaven is boring. And the devil will always try to deceive us and always try to lie to us and lies and conceive us that the heaven is boring. You see, most people believe that. Most people believe. I've asked the question a few people, not in church. I've asked a few people. I've got a cell group of people. No one, no one is in church. I've asked their question, what's, what, do, what do you think heaven will be like? What do you think? And 80% of them believe that when you die, you go to heaven, that you will, you will stand in a long line of queue on, on, on the clouds. You will stand in a long line queue. And then, um, then in, after a few seconds of wait, over minutes or an hour of wait, you will come to St. Peter, P- Paul, and he will tick you off and says, Ah, oh, Eric, welcome. You here. And then you tick it off, and then after you tick, you get a stupid little rope. I don't know. All the angels are wearing less ropes. I don't know. Then you get a stupid little rope, and then a stupid little hop. And then you will go and play, learn to play harp for about a thousand years. I don't know. Okay. And what I want to do with it? And I know I didn't sing a song. Okay, whatever. So that's what people believe. People believe where they will be, they will wear a stupid road with a, with a what do you call it? A, what's the unabrican? Nene man. A speedo. Yes. Many people believe that they will wear a white speedo with a little robe and then a little flower crown and with a harp. Okay, and sing. okay, so that's that's obviously that's obviously a misconception. So why do people think heaven is boring? Is it maybe because people think that that God is a boring God? Is it because people believe that God always robs them from everything that's fun? God or God God is a a joy killer. Why do people think heaven is boring? Because I want to tell you tonight that heaven is the exact opposite of boredom. Because in heaven, there's an absence of evil and the spirit and the presence of God is living there. That is the exact opposite of boredom. Just think about this. Just think about this for a moment. Everything you enjoy now, everything you enjoy now, whatever you may think, anything you enjoy today or in the week or you're going to enjoy is a gift from God from heaven. So God is not a joy killer. God is not someone who wants to rob you of everything fun. Just, just, just imagine your, your, your favorite food. Just think about your favorite food now. Lekker now, ne? This is now a lekker Sunday. I glad you. Just imagine that lekker cookie daar achter. Okay. Nam. Chocolate. Wit is. Lekker. Caramel oor. Lekker. Just think about your favorite food. Just think about it. God gave you the taste buds to taste that food. Every time you eat a burger from whatever place, boom, it explodes in your mouth. God gave you that explosion in your mouth. God gave you taste. Just imagine that. Just imagine your most beautiful place you've ever seen in your life. Just imagine it. Did you know that God gave you the eyes to see that beautiful place. Everything you enjoy now is a gift from God, from heaven. When you feel joy, when you feel laughter, when you feel happiness, when you feel love, that's emotions given by a good God in heaven. You see, in heaven, you will enjoy everything you enjoy now on earth. But the good part is, there will be no more sin. There will be no more sickness. There will be no more sorrow. There will be no more pain. There will be no more death. Heaven is the exact opposite of boredom. It is where the presence of God are dwelling, staying. So I, I really want to, I, I want to give you highlights, just highlights of, of heaven. Because I couldn't give you 
all of them because we could stay here for about till next morning, six o'clock. So I just want to give you some high points and some highlights of what heaven will be like. And I've got scriptures here, but I'm not going to read all the scriptures again because it's a lot of scriptures. So I'm just going to give you, if you want the scriptures because you don't trust me, come and read my scriptures. I've got everything. I've got nothing to hide here. Okay. So it's just a normal book. Geen floating. Geen dit nie. Okay. All right. So highlight number one. Highlight number one. We will recognize one another and we will know, we will love, and we will be loved. <sighs> we will recognize one another. We will know one, we will love, and we will also be loved. Just imagine that. One, the scripture, 1 Corinthians 13 verse 12. Just imagine that. You can walk up to Peter and like, hey bro, how was it like walking on water? Bro, Peter... Let's imagine that. Ladies, ladies, if you if you struggled with birth, you can go up to even say, woman, what the heck was you thinking? Just imagine that you will be, we will recognize one another. Those of you who've lost loved ones, who is at Christ, obviously, you will be reunited. Man. Highlight number one. Highlight number two. Heaven will be a place of unimaginable beauty. Revelation 21. There will be new colors. There will be new sounds. There will be new tastes. There will be new sensations all over heaven. Just imagine, just imagine you going anywhere you want it. Anywhere you want it and traveling for the next 10 years. Seeing all of God's creation. Now imagine this without sin, without pain, without sorrow, without death. Man, Alicia and I had the privilege to go to Mauritius, uh, well, well, two times. Yeah, two times. I just imagine the white sands and the, and the crystal clear water and, 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 and all the beauty. And that will be in heaven. I will be in heaven with no sin, with no sorrow. I can be there and it will be unimaginable beauty in heaven. Highlight number three. In heaven, you will see Jesus face to face. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 35 and 55. Throughout scripture, you'll start to recognize that you can't be in the presence of God. All, our, all throughout of scripture. Because even Moses said, God, really, I want to see your glory. And God's like, huh, no man, you can't handle my glory. Even in the Old Testament, when the, preach, when, when the preacher, preach, priests went into the, went into the holies of the holies, they made a rope, they took a rope, tied it across, then immediately, because when he was so close to the glory of God, he will die so that they can drag them out. And throughout scripture, You cannot go too close to the glory of God. And now in heaven, Jesus says, you will see me face to face. You will look me in the eyes. We can talk to one another. We can have whatever we can. I I think you've never truly lived until you see the glory of the Son of Man. Man, just, yes, heaven is like a plaque. Number four, highlight number four. You will have new, oh. I like this one. 1 John 3. You will have new and perfect bodies. Yes! Man! Right now, when you are bald, you will get hair. Huh? No more migraines. No more copsier. No more nothing. You will have a perfect body. Man, just imagine a perfect hairline. You can gel it. You can straighten it. You can do whatever you want. Heaven. Man. Number five. Highlight number five. In heaven, heaven is the absence of everything bad. Everything painful and everything evil. In heaven, it's the presence of everything good, holy, and glorious. Man. You will have the glory in heaven of working for Jesus in a way you enjoy it and a way you love it. Man, if you like gardening, you can grow avos on steroids in heaven. Like this 
big size. And you can just eat it afterwards and grow another one on steroids. If you like singing in heaven, they will be singing for you. You can have your own America's Got Talent, whatever you want. And the judge will always give you a golden buzzer. Just imagine in heaven, there will be a place to build. There will be a place to create. There will be places to do whatever you are. Because there will be an absence of evil and it will be a place of everything good. Whatever you imagine in heaven, whatever you're sitting here and imagining in heaven, heaven will be better. Heaven will be better. No more death, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more sickness, no more fear, no more stress, no more sleepless night, no more anxiety, no more abuse, no more divorce, no more diseases, no more violence, no more racism, no more three o'clock bathroom bikes at the night. No more Mondays. Yay! No more bad breath. Yay! The Bible says, no eye has seen, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him. Amen. The second misconception. It was just the highlights. Second misconception. We believe that the world is your home. Got a misconception of that. Is. We believe the world now, you're living now, is your home. Philippians 3 verse 90 to 20. Their end is destruction. Their end is destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their glory is in their shame. They are focused on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. They are focused on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. It's in heaven. We've got this misconception that the world is what matters now. What I wear now matters. What I have now matters. Where I go now matters. Where I, where I, what I own, where I live, my bank account, your opinion about me. It matters now. But the world is not our home. Our citizenship is in heaven. Our world is not in a... Francis Chan had a, had a, had a cool visual thing about this. My, my stock door after you. Alsjeblieft, sorry. Alicia is a rider. Nee, ek grap. Okay. Um. Okay. Grap rarig net. Grap rarig net. Let's say the stick is our timeline. Okay. The stick is our timeline. That goes far back in history, as you can imagine. Okay. In history. Hier die my nou afwees. Maar as ek Alicia is... Besen breek, gaat sy vir my roer, okay. So ek kon nie hierdie ding afkry nie, okay. So just, vergeet van hierdie stuk. So this is history, as far back, far back as you can imagine, okay, tot daar. And then the, then the second part of all, this is the future. Imagine your future, eternity. The Bible says that we will be living in eternity. When your life is over, eternity will last for ever, and 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 ever. Okay, eternity will last forever. So this is history, as far as you can imagine, this is eternity that will last forever. And then we have to self, ask ourselves the question, where are you? And I'm, this is the red. And we are here. Da. Okay, because there is Adam and Eve. Okay, then it is um, Moses, then Esther, then Jesus, okay, then Paul. And then fast forward, World War One, fast forward, World War Two, fast forward, first cell phone, first car, Justin Bieber meets Hailey. <laughs> Justin Bieber broke up with Hailey. <laughs> okay. And then somewhere along the line, there we are. You see? There we are. Can't see you, but hello, Eric. You can't see you. But there we are. Okay? There we are. You see? This is your past, and this is your future in eternity. Scripture says your life is a mist that fades away. You are here, and just in a moment, your life can be gone. One moment, your life can be gone. You can walk out of this church, and your life can be gone in one moment. 
And many people are living for this. Many people tonight are still living for this, this moment. Because we believe that this is our home. We believe that this is our place. And I want to, I want to, I want to teach you tonight something. I want to, I want to, I want to encourage you something and, and do something to you tonight. When things, when, when things upset you here, you have to self, you have to ask yourself the question, does it matter in a hundred years from now? If things upset you now, ask yourself the question, does it matter? In a hundred years from now. Because if it doesn't matter now, it doesn't matter in eternity. Okay? If it doesn't matter here, it won't matter here. You see, if things really, really upset me, if it doesn't matter me here, if it doesn't affect me here, it doesn't have to affect me here. Because this is not our home. Our citizenship is in heaven. So we have to solve our question. Why what I want to do here must echo here. Because what I believe about here determines how I will live here. You see, here I want to give. Here I want to love. Here I want to serve. Here I want to, I want to, my words have to count because what I say here will affect my year. Who I serve, yeah? Who I serve here will affect my year. In some time, you have to go, you have to live in eternity. You have, we have to live in eternity. But you can live it in the glory of heaven. Or you can live it in the horrors of hell. But what you do here. So many people tell me, Ach, Erik, wat maak dit sak? Ek is 21 jaar oud, lekker jonk. I can do whatever I want. Oh, rarig. Ho. Oh. But it affects you here. It starts affecting you here. So you cannot do whatever you want here. And expect, and expect your eternity to look same. It matters here, by all means. If it matters here, I want to live. It matters there. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18. So do we, so we do not focus on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. What you believe about eternity determines how you live. Today. Number three. Misconception. Number three. And I will ending with this. Most people. We've got this misconception. That most people are going to heaven anyway. Misconception. Ah, oh, it doesn't matter what I do, Yerik. It doesn't matter how I live. Most people will go to heaven. Good people are going to heaven. Right? I haven't killed anybody. If I do have, it was with a reason. Grap, I could not have anyone to do it. I'm not a drug dealer, Eric. I'm a good person. I've never abused someone. I'm a good person. I'm a good person. I'm not a bad person. I am going to heaven. Right? The answer is no. Because I want, to, I want to remind you of the words Jesus said. Jesus himself said this word. He said, broad is the road and wide is the path that leads to destruction. And many people are on it. But narrow is the road and small is the gate that leads to life. And only a few people have it. Good people. Don't go to heaven. It is forgiven believers that go to heaven. Forgiven by the grace of Jesus. I want to end with one passage. And I want God to speak through you this passage. I want just to, just let the word impact you in this last scripture. 
Romans 3. For all have sinned, and all fall short of the glory of God. They are justified freely by His grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. God presented Him as a proposition, propination through faith in His blood, to demonstrate His righteousness, because in His restraint, God passed over the sins previously committed. I want to read you, I just want to read you in my Bible. My Bible is more anointed. I grap, enige Bible is anointed. My name is Grap, it's Arendt, it's always up. Okay. Anders is the, okay. Romans 3. You can follow it. Gooi dit weer op die bord. You can follow it just like again. Number, verse 23. Everyone has sinned and is far away from God's saving presence. But by the free gift of God's grace, all are put right with Him through Christ Jesus, who sets them free. God offered Him so that by his death he should become the means by which people's sins are forgiven, through their faith in him. God did this in order to demonstrate that he is righteous. In the past he was patient and overlooked people's sins, but in the present time he deals with their sins in order to demonstrate his righteousness. In this way, God shows that he himself is righteous and that he puts right everyone who believes in Jesus. My goal for tonight, I've got, I had one goal for tonight. My goal for tonight was to increase your urgency tonight. That was my old goal. To increase your urgency tonight. My goal tonight, my goal tonight was to recognize, I want you to recognize that this is what you have now. And the way you live now matters here. Start living with a new urgency. You have the choice. The glory of heaven or the horrors of hell. Next week, I'm going to speak on the, I'm, well, do a sermon on the, the horrors of hell. And believe me, it's horrible. But you can, you can choose tonight the glory of heaven. Let's just pray for one moment. Father, Thank you that we love you, Jesus. Thank you for your word tonight. Thank you that your word just, just flood us tonight, Father. Your words did the work tonight. Father, my goal tonight was that people start living with a new urgency in their lives, Father. People have to look tonight and say, what I do now matters. What I do now matters into eternity. I cannot be a slave to things tonight. I cannot do whatever I want tonight and believe that I still go to heaven. I can still be part of eternity. Father, I want us to just, just have a new urgency in our life. See the way you see things. Father, break our hearts for what break yours for. So that we can live in urgency. When we see someone, Father, that we can have boldness to witness. That we can be a slave, Father, serving in your kingdom. But what our life matters now. What we do now echoes in eternity. What we do now is determine why, determine how we see eternity, Father. And if there's anyone in this church, Saying, Eric, I don't know where I am now. I don't know where I'll spend my eternity. I don't know, do I go to the glory of heaven? Or do I go to the horrors of hell? Father, the day tonight will say, Father, I don't want to go to the horrors of hell. I want to see your glory, Father. I want to be reunited with the ones I love, Father. I will be, I want to be, I want to see your imaginable beauty, Father. I want to have a perfect body again. Father, I want to see you face to face. So that they can make this choice tonight and say, Father, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you are my God. And Father, that you will change them. Written their name in the books of book of life, Father. So they can be part of your family. Make us more urgent. 
Make us work. Make us live with more urgency, Father. Our life matters. And if there's things that we need to go, let go of, Father, so that we can do it tonight. I want to let go of that unforgiveness. I want to let go of that better right. I want to let go of that, all of the disgrudges I have. I just want to let it go, Father. Maybe there's things I have to start learning with. Maybe I start to, to spend time in your word again, Father. Help me to do it. Maybe there's things I'm, 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 I'm like for sloth and pornography. Alcoholism. But I can change that, Father. Because I want to start living with new urgency in my life. We love you, Jesus. We honor you. You are good and thank you for heaven. Man, I cannot wait for heaven. I cannot wait to meet you face to face. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen.